Let's kick things off with the Black Lives Matter movements. Although you may be hearing less about them than you used to, protests are still going on around the country, in part because police brutality is still going on around the country. And the ripple effects of this movement are reaching all aspects of American life, including a long way to change in the NFL. The Washington Redskins have officially retired the Redskins name and Indian head logo after 87 years. The football team announced the change following recent pressure from sponsors and decades of criticism that they are offensive to Native Americans. They are now working on a new name and design, which might take some time due to trademark issues. Warriors, Red Wolves, and Red Tails are just some of the most popular choices among fans on social media. Major retailers have already removed Redskins apparel from store shelves and websites. Yes, after decades of resisting, the Washington Redskins have finally decided to change their name. And look, this is a step in the right direction, but it almost feels like dismantling structural racism is so difficult that instead, America is just crossing off the easier items on its racism to-do list. Okay, uh, next item, uh, we gotta create an equal and just society. Hmm, all right, let's skip that one. Um, what about changing the name of a football team and canceling Aunt Jemima, yeah? That should hold us over for a year. So the old name is officially gone. But now, the team is searching for a new name. And I'll be honest, I think when it comes to a new name, they gotta keep it simple, keep it safe. Change the name to the Washington Washingtons. Yeah, it's catchy, it's easy to remember, and most importantly, it honors one of the greatest Americans of all time. My man. <laughs> In other news, Former Trump campaign advisor and man genetically designed to look guilty, Roger Stone, is back in the headlines. Stone was about to begin a 40-month prison sentence for witness tampering, lying to Congress, and obstruction of justice in connection with the Mueller investigation. But it turns out, it really does pay to have friends in high places. Tonight, the breaking news, the president commuted the prison sentence for his friend of several decades, Roger Stone. Just days before Stone was set to begin his more than three-year prison sentence, the president making his longtime friend and ally a free man. The 67-year-old promised to never turn on the president. This is what Stone told Howard Feynman. He knows I was under enormous pressure to turn on him. It would have eased my situation considerably, but I didn't. Republican Senator Mitt Romney accusing the president of unprecedented historic corruption. This is bribery, pure and simple, a quid pro quo. The president, through this commutation, is basically saying, if you lie for me, if you cover up for me, if you have my back, then I will make sure that you get a get-out-of-jail-free card. Oh, wow. I think Trump is gonna have to update his campaign chants after this. Lock him up! Unless he's my friend, then set him free! Seriously, I love how Trump is the law and order president when it comes to his enemies or marginalized groups being sent to jail, but as soon as it's one of his friends, he becomes a prison abolitionist. The prison system in this country is out of control. We gotta fix it! Roger, get out. All right, problem solved. Back to the way it was. And we all see what happened here, right? Roger Stone lied to protect Donald Trump, and in exchange, Trump rewarded Stone by getting him out of prison. And what's even more amazing is that Stone straight up said he deserved a get-out-of-jail-free card because he could have turned on Trump, but he didn't. Like, is there any interaction Trump has with another person that isn't a quid pro quo? Dad, can you pass the salt? I pass the salt. You disappear. 